the biggest thing that I would like to impart to you with this video, uh, what I learned, is that DIY projects are not always cheaper than just buying something that's ready-made for you. Greetings adventurers, my name is Kramer and I have just today completed a more period style bedroll. So hopefully I won't have to be using sleeping bags at night, even in colder temperatures here. I'm gonna be supplementing with the wool blanket cloak that I have, but this is a pretty simple construction. It's a canvas drop cloth on the outside that I attempted to waterproof. We'll get into all the steps in a second. And just on the inside, there is a 66 inch by 96 inch, 100% uh, wool blanket on the inside that I got from the Townsend's Reenacting Company, not affiliated, but there is a link in the description. They are a little pricey. It's a 100% wool blanket and it's huge. The reason why you want a larger blanket is so that you can get as many layers both above you and below you as possible while you're sleeping. Um, and then I have the canvas over that to help keep everything clean because I like the blanket and I don't want it to get ruined. The whole bed roll weighs approximately five and a half pounds. And had I used a more traditional waterproofing method like boiled linseed oil or beeswax, or I had gone with a full silicone bath, it likely would have weighed upwards of seven to eight pounds, maybe even more. So I didn't work from any particular template with this. I pretty much made it up as I went along. And my inspiration from this comes from a couple things that I've seen on Pinterest, as well as this video by the Townsend's YouTube channel. If you haven't heard of them for some reason, highly recommend. So that is what I encourage you to do is just to work with what you have. So pretty much any wool blanket will do. You'll definitely want to be using wool for this. It's a lot warmer than the other options. It has better performance in wet conditions too. So the canvas that I'm using is a canvas drop cloth that I bought from my local hardware store. And I don't know that I would choose to do that again compared to other canvas items that I have. Um, this material is very loosely woven. It's, it's not the greatest. There are loose threads here and there. Um, it's just not meant to be used for something like this. It's just that that they come in large bulk. They're relatively cheap comparatively, but it was still like 20 or $30. I got a six by nine foot uh, piece and I ended up only using half of it for this project, plus a little bit up at the top, just to make sure that the bag could go over my head. But compared to the canvas knapsack that I was sent a couple of months ago, the canvas on that is just far superior. Um, and even duck cloth, I bought a bit of duck cloth at, um, which is a type of canvas weave, I believe. I bought a bit of duck cloth at my local Joanne Fabrics. It's a bit on the pricier side, especially for a larger piece like this, but just the, the weave would have been so much better, so much easier to waterproof. And so this whole project um, in itself is very simple. So. I don't do any modifications to the blanket. I'm not really giving you measurements because my, this was made specifically for my body size. I measured myself. Um, I'm five foot seven, so it needed to be longer than five foot seven. I measured all the way around my shoulders. I multiplied that number by two because the whole thing has to fold over on top of me and then added six to eight inches to the entire width so that I can move around in it comfortably. And then I folded it into thirds and then sewn at the bottom and then about four inches up the feet just to keep me from kicking out of it. There's a one inch overlap here at the center, um, but your measurements are gonna be different than mine, so you're gonna need to do those yourself. I'm experimenting with ways that I'm folding the wool blanket inside. I wanna get as many layers both beneath and on top of me as possible. The one thing that I'm certain I will be doing is rolling the last two or three inches up in the bottom so that my feet don't roll out of it because keeping your feet warm during the night is very important. So it'll be like a little envelope for me there at the bottom. Uh, and and then I added ties to it so that I don't kick out of it. I'm anticipating that those ties are going to be a lot easier to contend with than zippers. I hate zippers on sleeping bags, so looking forward to see how that performs. So the ties I put on this are replaceable, and that is because modularity is always something that is key for me. I put two of them uh, 40 inches in total up from the bottom and then spaced 20 inches apart each, and it is actually two layers of leather for each tie. So there were eight one-inch squares that I cut out, and then I sewed one uh, one on each side of the canvas. So the canvas is actually sandwiched in between those two pieces so that when the ties get pulled tight, I'm pulling on the leather stitching, not the actual canvas. Again, because the canvas material is rather weak on this. Um, and that was something that I learned from the knapsack that Jennifer sent me. So once again, thank you, Jennifer. The ties were just ropes that I happen to have lying around in the garage. They're a bit of tie line. I cinched the ends so that they don't come apart. And then I used a 
leather stitching needle with a thread that had a knot tied in it so that it wouldn't pull through the rope. I threaded the needle through the rope and then used that needle to thread all the way through the leather sandwich and then tied a knot at the end so that it wouldn't pull all the way through. And that means that if I need to replace the canvas eventually, I can take those ties and those leather pieces off very easily and just move them to the new one. If one of them breaks or something, I can replace it easily. So nothing sewed directly to the canvas. The absolute longest part of this process was attempting to waterproof the canvas. And the reason why I wanted to do that is simply because the way I'm sitting on it right now, when I'm sitting down on it or when I'm lying on it to sleep, it's going to be in contact with the moisture in the ground and that is going to potentially be an issue eventually. Using wool as your blanket is going to help mitigate that to a degree. Having some wool sleeping wear will help mitigate that to some degree. So you should be fine. Um, it's not like you're going to be sleeping out in the open in the rain with this and it's going to keep you dry. It's not the purpose. Um, you wouldn't pick a campsite like that. If you're sleeping in a puddle, you've done something wrong. The waterproofing technique that I originally tried to use was very expensive. Um, so originally what I wanted to do with this drop cloth is that I wanted to soak it in a solution um, of one to five, 100% silicone um, to mineral spirits. And that worked out horribly for me. I wasted an entire day trying to do that. I think the mineral spirits that I bought um, were like the green eco-friendly kind, which means that it's like 65% water and the silicone just did not dissolve. I ended up with this big glob in the center that I had to end up throwing away because it wasn't going anywhere after like an hour of stirring, which just wasn't right. The other thing with using a silicone solution to paint over it is I don't know how well that breathes and it's fine for a tent or for for a covering, but when you're sleeping in it, you need to be able to moderate your body temperature and it could get dangerous very quickly if your sleeping bag doesn't breathe. Um, so as I'm thinking about it, it might be a good idea that I didn't try to make my own silicone solution. I could have gone with the boiled linseed oil option. It would have been the more historically accurate option, but I don't want to mess around with how flammable that's supposed to be. I've heard mixed things. Some people have said that it's nothing to worry about. Other people have said that it's definitely something to consider. Um, that plus the drying time, those are the reasons why I wanted to go with silicone instead. The silicone didn't work. And then with the silicone solution, I realized that I was essentially trying to make something that already exists for much cheaper in the form of the uh, camp silicone aerosol sprays. And now I know those aren't supposed to last as long, but they're a lot cheaper and they're a lot easier to work with than trying to make something from scratch. So that is what I used on this with the intention of over the next couple of months sharing with you whether that is effective or not as a waterproofing method uh, for this project. So I used the Kiwi waterproofing sprays. As far as I'm aware, there are three different levels. The blue Blue Can is a water protector, which appears to be the weakest one. Then there's the Green Camp Spray, which is water repellent. And then there's the Red Can, which is waterproof. So that is what I used on this because I wanted it to be as resistant as possible. So the biggest problem with the spray that I think I'm going to encounter is actually not the spray itself, but rather that the canvas material is rather porous, again, because the weave is very loose because it's just a drop cloth. I think I'm gonna experience a, a level of, of misting with that. I don't think that's a problem with the spray because I've used it on my shoes to absolutely great effect, but it's just a much tighter material. And so I think the lesson to really be learned from this project is not necessarily how to make this specifically because it's rather simple, but rather that DIY solutions are not always cheaper or more time or cost effective than just buying something that's already been made. So the blanket was $220, that's really expensive. I got a coupon, but it, it, that's an expensive blanket. The canvas drop cloth was somewhere in the $20 to $30 range, and then the original waterproofing materials I bought were in the $70 range. I got two cans of the mineral spirits, one of which I'm going to return, and two uh, tubes of silicone, 100% silicone caulk, and that, that adds up. I'm sitting on like $300 worth of materials. At that price point, it would have been much cheaper 
to just buy a waxed canvas tarp and modify it rather than trying to make my own from scratch. It would have been less time consuming to do it that way as well. So what I think I learned is, and what I hope that you will take from this as well, is that when you're buying that many materials, it's only cost effective if you're making a bunch of items. It only would have been worth it if I was gonna use all of that silicone and mineral spirits to waterproof a ton of items. But for one project, it's super expensive to try to do that. Um, you know, if you're bushcrafting, if you're doing a whole bunch of tarps, or if I wanted to do all of my bags or my hoods or something like that too, maybe it would have been worth it. But the silicone sprays, just so much cheaper. They're like, you know, $10 a bottle uh, and they last for a good while. The question is, does it work on this? And we'll have to wait until I've had it for a little bit longer to find out. I mean, if it works, then it works and it still looks the same. Um, so if that's enough for you, then I think you should go for that. I mean, what I've experienced is that the waterproofing methods that I've seen on some bushcraft channels are just not as easy as they make it look. And finding that out the hard way is pretty expensive. Um, so just want to caution you there, but I don't want to make it, I don't want to make any promises, but Kit from Skilltree may be doing some more historical type waterproofing or waterproofing with a silicone solution. If you're interested, go ahead and check out his channel. Again, I'm not promising he's gonna do that, um, but I have it on good authority that something like that might be coming down the pipe. So keep an eye out for that. So with that, I will be adding this happily to my camp kit. Hopefully it lasts me a good long time. If you'd like to see a little bit what my camping setup looks like at the moment with this as an addition now, uh, you can go ahead and check out this video, Medieval Camp Aesthetic. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.